Okay, so some people have been watching this video, and we've gotten a lot of feedback. Um, some of the general public does not really understand what's going on. So I'm going to explain it here, probably try and explain it in about 15 minutes. Um, Henry Ramo, who is an 87-year-old war veteran, hired an attorney to represent his interests back in 2013. The attorney that he hired, he claims, gave him legal advice that got him arrested. He has the record of arrest, along with his daughter, Joni, and his son, Loam. They all three got arrested for trespassing on their own property, and the attorney gave them that advice. And that is why Henry is not paying the bill. And on top of that, no one is actually verifying the bill. Nobody is saying that it's true do and o. The attorney's just suing him in a complaint. Um, so uh, let's kind of go on to what happened that day, March 26th of 2018. That morning, we got down to the clerk's office before court so that we could file the proper paperwork and inform the court of what Henry was doing. What's the file number again? It's 16 CVD 1303. So that was an audio of where the clerk was asking us what the file number was so that she could pull up the file because Henry had some documents to file in there. So some people have asked us why Henry hasn't just paid the bill. And this image is in the documentary. Henry asked Massagi to settle the matter in private, not in court. He just wished for a verified bill. And Massagi, of course, could not give him a verified bill. So there's no way for him to, to pay off an unverified bill. Nobody's willing to, to swear that the money is true do and o. So that would be like Verizon and you're an AT&T customer, Verizon sending you a bill, and you saying, hey, but you're not giving me any service. That's why Henry did not pay the bill. The clerk refuses to certify what is in the case jacket. And that's actually one of the jobs of the clerks. If you go there, you can get papers certified saying that this is true, this is in a true copy of what's in the case, and the clerk refuses to certify what's in the case jacket for Henry, basically just because he's a man doing it on his own, and he doesn't have an attorney. The notice of appearance. She has no business appearing in this case. My supervisor was what, helping you last time, and she told you we're not allowed to certify anything or put anything in writing, that we're not allowed to do that. I can look through it, but I'm not, we're not allowed to put anything in writing that there's not something there. Well, he's putting it in writing. He's signing it. Just okay, certify can, it. But we're not going to sign anything. Or okay, well, anything. just look through it. Because the court clerks were probably instructed to give us a hard time and not do their job so that we couldn't prove the case that we had building. You can hear right there that that she specifically says that they aren't allowed to sign anything for me. Now, right before the, uh, the case is heard, Barbara Lubin, who is the imposter attorney, comes up to Henry Ramo and tells him to testify against himself. You can't hear that part so clearly, but what you can hear very clearly is that when Loam tells her that his father is going to do something else, she sternly looks at him and says, that's the point, don't. Clearly indicating that she knew about the paperwork he had put in and filed that morning, which he actually filed his paperwork seven minutes before Massagi, the opposing attorney, filed his paperwork. My father has another point of reference. I'll make that clear. That's the point. Don't. You can clearly hear her say, no, that's the point. 
people. After this happens, when they actually call the case, they never even call the case. They never call the names. They never call the case number. And the judge admits a conflict of interest. I was an employee of French Youngblood, Maskey, and Jackson. So the judge right there admits that he has a conflict of interest because he was an employee of the law firm who's bringing an action against this man for an unverified bill or an unverified claim. And still, the reason why Henry did not stand up or say anything was because we were being respectful to allow them to proceed if it was not Henry's case. All we were seeing was two attorneys sitting on different sides of the court and a judge up there. The court had been well informed that morning that Barbara Lubin was not Henry Ramos' attorney. So here, Thomas McAvoy Britton allows Barbara to leave. She never motioned to leave the case, and she was never in the case. So Thomas McAvoy Britton practices law on Barbara's behalf, which is practicing law from the bench. And a judge cannot do that. I'm going to allow her oral motion to be released at this time based upon the party's statement that she does not represent him. Thank you, Your Honor. And then after allowing Barbara to leave, which Thomas McAvoy Britton should have taken Henry Ramo out of handcuffs as soon as he knew and it was clear that Henry Ramo was a party to the case. Okay, even if you are accused of murder, they will have your handcuffs taken off when you are present at court so that you do not look guilty. Henry, who's not a murderer, who was there for a civil trial, did not have that right or luxury. And then officers manhandled an 87-year-old to get him to go sit at the defendant's table, and you can clearly hear Henry's son, Gregory, say he's 87 years old. You know, let him go, something like that. Don't do that. Mr. Sheriff, me, take, him, take him on out. So then Thomas McAvoy Britton has Henry Ramo removed when he was the only acting witness in this, this case, in this trial, more or less. So Thomas McAvoy Britton, the man who is acting as judge, says no less than three times that he has reviewed the entire file that morning. And remember, Henry Ramo filed his documents seven minutes before Massagi filed Massagi's documents. So they were obviously in the case file. But, Madam Clerk, based upon review of the, the uh, court file, the pleadings in that file. Then, at this point, um, this will be the audio of where Baba is, uh, Henry, Henry Ramo, sorry, where Henry Ramo is talking to Thomas McAvoy Britton, who is trying to force him to represent himself. And he tells Henry Ramo that there is a proper way to do what he is doing and an improper way to make the court aware that Barbara Lubin is not his attorney. The only problem is, is that Henry Ramo did the proper way. He informed the court in writing that morning before the case was never called. But typically they call a case. And the fact that they did not call a case is just more evidence to show that Thomas McAvoy Britton, Boyd B. Massagi, and Barbara Lubin were all working in collusion against Henry Ramo to take his property. I was only actually against the attorney that was not my attorney there. And she knows that she's thinking about the attorney that was not my attorney. 
schedule. There is a proper, there is a proper way to do that and an improper way to do that. The way you did that this morning was not proper. You're acting as your own attorney. You're deemed to know the rules. You understand that going forward? Absolutely. The law, ass the law assumes you know the rules since you are choosing to act as your own attorney. Well, you don't have an attorney. You're acting as your own attorney. You're not acting as my own. Stated she wasn't mine. So here, when we go down to the magistrate's office to swear out a warrant against Thomas McAvoy Britton, not a judge, but against a man who did wrong by arresting me, throwing me in jail for 48 hours, and not allowing Baba to be fully heard in court, and arresting Baba in, his, in an action where he is a party to the action, the magistrate is lying to us about whether we can swear out a warrant or not. So, right here it has definition. A warrant for arrest consists of a statement of the crime of which the person to be arrested is accused. We were accusing him of a crime and an order directing that person so accused be arrested and held to answer to the charges made against him. It is based upon a showing of probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. There is nowhere in here where it says that an officer of the state must show the probable cause or be the one swearing out the warrant. So right here, Statement of the crime. The warrant must contain a statement of the crime of which the person to be arrested is accused. No warrant for arrest nor any arrest made pursuant thereto is invalid because of any technicality of pleading. If the statement is sufficient to identify the crime, we definitely had a statement of the crime. Showing of probable cause. A judicial officer may issue a warrant for arrest only when he is supplied with sufficient information supported by oath or affirmation to make an independent judgment that there is probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed and that the person to be arrested committed it. The information must be shown by one or more of the following. Affidavit oral testimony under oath or affirmation before the issuing official. We were there with declarations, criminal complaints, and everyone was there to give oral testimony under oath or affirmation before a judicial officer to make the arrest lawful by the state standards. And we were denied our right to justice not only by the magistrate, but also by the police department where we went later. Not only did we do this, but we also filed judicial complaints against Thomas McAvoy Britton. We cannot talk about it because it's against the law, but our stance is the state will do absolutely nothing because Mark Martin gave Thomas McAvoy Britton a promotion the day that we went in to swear out a warrant for his arrest. They are not going to uphold your rights. And if somebody violently robbed you, kidnapped your daughter, or molested your wife, that it is up to the state to decide if they wish for you to get justice or not. That is what they are telling you. Then, when we go over to the police department, not only do they refuse to give us justice, but they also threaten us with arrest for trespassing because we are there to report a crime. However, there's a crime being committed here. You're about to be charged with trespassing. So we were threatened with arrest of trespass for being up at the police station to report a felony crime. When we go to file a public notice, to allow everybody in North Carolina to know what type of criminal activity is going on at the Henderson County Courthouse 
we are refused from filing that public notice because the actors of the state and the people who are in charge of the state know that as soon as we file those documents into the public record, they must act on them. Filing those documents into the county recorder is just as effective as filing those documents into the courthouse. So they are literally refusing the people of North Carolina justice unless it is convenient for them. They refuse us because it has all of the names in there. The name of Thomas McAvoy Britton, Monica Jernigan, and the actors at the sheriff's office. They give us a statute that basically says it's illegal and unlawful to file false liens or encumbrances, which is basically a bill. If we were filing something into the county recorders that said that they owed us money, they would have every single right to turn us away. But all we were doing was filing a public notice to inform the public of the unlawful actions of the actors of that courthouse and sheriff's department. About the judge, all those names. All those people's names. And that's why she would not file it, is because she will not file against a man who has a title of a judge because he is above you. He can break the law. He can get away with breaking the law because nobody in the state is willing to hold him accountable. This is why we wish for the people of North Carolina to stand with us and protest against what he is doing, against Thomas McAvoy Britton's unlawful activities. So if you wish to see justice for Henry Ramo, an 87-year-old Korean War veteran, or if you believe that no man should be above the law, and that no man should be beneath the law, or if you just wish to follow us and see what videos we'll be coming out with in the future, you can go to jcshamanandbaba.com, scroll down here to the bottom, put in your name and email address, and then you can subscribe for email updates, and stay in contact with us, or you can email us at jc.s.baba30 at gmail.com. Thank you for watching the video, and please stick with us, we'll have more to come.